All right, this is going to be the uh, release video for the Mud Skipper. Uh, Mud Skipper is an amphibious truck that um, is for a current challenge. The challenge is there's a lighthouse keeper who lives over here at Olson Bay. Uh, they need to be able to drive from their house at Olson Bay down the beach into the water. They need to be able to traverse the water and then get over to the lighthouse here on the lighthouse island, drive up and all the way up to the lighthouse. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, do a little tour of the mud skipper. So we'll start um, on the exterior here. So um, you have side pipes. Um, it's kind of based on uh, kind of like an 80s, you know, like Bronco, um, some of the amphibious vehicles. It's it's an open top, kind of like a, just a fun little, uh, you know, kind of like a Jeep vehicle. Um, we have a door handle here. We have some uh, first aid kits on the door. Uh, we have a refueling uh, anchor right there to refuel it. Um, if we jump inside, as you can see, we have uh, seating for four in the back, fire extinguisher, another first aid kit, fire extinguisher and first aid kit. Um, we'll go over the lighting when we get it started. We have a light cord and a pintle, so we, uh, we can attach it to a trailer. I'll uh, add the trailer in as a, an add-on. Um, also, I, I need to add the, um, the handle for the door on this side. We have some nav lights, some uh, blinkers. Uh, I'll go ahead and jump in. All right, so jumping in here, we um, we're gonna start by um, do engine start stop. Engine will come on. We have headlights here, so let's go to um, we'll wait till we get outside. But have headlights. Uh, headlights will also turn on a red light that kind of illuminates the cockpit, so that's bright enough in here. RPM, engine temperature. We have a digital speedometer. We have nav lights and spotlights. Uh, reverse. Uh, release parking brake, fuel, and hazards. So let's uh, go ahead and we will release the parking brake and we'll go outside. So it's just WSAD. All right, so as you can see, uh, we have our um, headlights on. So we have, um, we have solid uh, red um, brake lights plus ambers all around. Um, if we... Um, do a left turn. As you can see, we get a left directional. We also get a left directional there on the um, front right. We get a right directional and we get a right directional there. If I hold the brakes down, as though if I apply the brakes, we get uh, flashing reds. If I put it in reverse, we get um, reverse lights. All right. Uh, we also have spotlights on those stocks there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, it's daytime, so let's shut off the lights. Um, and I also have, um, take it out of reverse. All right, and so what? A, I still have spotlights on, so let's shut the spots off. So let's go ahead and we'll drive over to Olsen. So uh, I, I wanted this to be a pretty realistic vehicle for the uh, competition. You know, I, um, I wanted this to be a vehicle that you could see, you know, just a lighthouse. Uh, worker owning. I didn't want it to be, you know, a huge, expensive, you know, multi-million dollar vehicle that, you know, no lighthouse owner would be able to own. I wanted this to be, you know, kind of a working class vehicle. So it, it kind of has that Bronco feel to it, you know, open top with some seating in the back. Um, you know, it functions well on land. Um, I didn't want to do too much in the in the way of gearing. I just wanted it to kind of be functional and easy. Um, as you can see, we're doing about 50 miles an hour. Um, I have this set to miles an hour. So we, we're doing 50 miles an hour. So this might look slow, but, you know, this is 50 miles an hour on bumpy back roads. Um, you know, StormRx has a lot of issues with grip. You know, you get really slippery, greasy tires. So by putting a limiter on there, I've, I've limited it to uh, that speed so that you're not um, ending up, you know, skidding all over the town. And, you know, uh, so a lot of people will build their builds where, you know, the tires are constantly squealing and it's just kind of obnoxious. So I, uh, I want to put a limiter on this. I want it to be realistic. You know, this is, uh, you know, kind of an 80s style um, vehicle. And I, I didn't want it to be super, uh, you know, super insane or, uh, you know, have squealing tires the whole time. So you can see we're actually up to about 60 miles an hour. So as you can see, we're more than, uh, more than fast enough, 67, you know, so... Uh, 
So, um, you know, I had a couple thoughts with how I was going to do the transition from land to sea, and I ended up uh, figuring out that, you know, I was going to do like a button where you press a button when you go in the water, and it swaps out some modes and does clutches, but um, if you, you can even hear it. You see the prop turns at all times and the wheels turn at all times. The reason I did this was you can easily drive this from the land into the water and vice versa, and you don't have to do anything. It just functions well in both environments, so it makes it a really nice amphibious vehicle. So let's uh, so let's kind of start the um, you know what the challenge is all about. So we're gonna go here to this guy's house. So we'll say this last uh, this last house is his, and so he's gonna get up and he's gonna want to go to uh, work in the morning. So let's go ahead and we'll go in the water. So we're just gonna drive it down. I recommend you don't go in the water too hot. That prop is always turning. Um, as soon as that prop gets a bite in the water, sometimes it wants to really uh, you know kind of flip you. So. It's nice to just kind of take it really nice and easy into the water like so and as you see we're in so let's go ahead and just turn on our nav lights so if we look around you can see we have red white and green and now let's just start driving so it's still W A S A and D um, it does have a stability system so once you get moving in here it'll keep it nice and flat um, one other feature to note is um, so I'm still driving with W S A and D you can do that if you want but what I recommend in the water is if you go to pedal throttle mode and you press, um, you know, you select that, you can now control with the throttle. So you can actually use the one and two keys. So as you can see, one is um, increased throttle, two is decreased throttle, three is idle. All right, uh, ignore water mode and reverse. That's old. I need to change that. Um, so this is increased throttle, decreased throttle, and that's engine idle. So we can do that with the one, two, three keys, or we can do it with this panel. So let's just do it with the one, two, three keys. So I can just hold down the um, one key, and this will do sticky throttle. So if I did WS, that's a, a reset throttle. That will uh, you'll have to hold that down. If you do the one and two keys, you can set the throttle to where you want. So right now we're at full throttle. I can take my hand off, and it will uh, maintain throttle. All right, so we're doing 40 knots in the water here. So we, we have, uh, so, you know, we're doing almost 70 miles an hour. Oh, that's actually uh, miles an hour. We're doing about 70 miles an hour on the uh, land, and we're doing about 40 in the water. So um, as you can see, it, it, it operates really nicely in the water. It's very uh, stable and maneuverable. Um, you know, it has good rudder authority. It's a little slow in the rudder, but that's intentional. I don't want, you know, I don't want this to be a, you know, it's kind of, it's a boxy truck that's in the water. It's not a really super maneuverable speedboat. But, um, you know, it functions really well. Uh, let's turn the headlights on. And we'll go ahead and we'll go into night here. Um, so as you can see, I added a red under underlighting here. So that allows you to more easily see your dash and everything at night. Um, this really sips fuel. Um, so it's nice and fuel efficient. It doesn't have a ton of fuel, but it has more than enough. So as you can see, it, uh, nice job at just, um, you know, traversing the water here good speed of uh, you know 40 something knots all right so when we want to go back to the WS mode see we're getting close to the lighthouse we we can just if we press this E button again it will go to WS and we'll also idle our throttle so that we can just press that and uh, automatically go into the uh, the WS mode for uh, driving all right so let's go back to day here and we'll beach on the day. So we'll keep the nav lights on, we'll shut off the spots, and we'll shut off our headlights. All right, so we're actually gonna pick the, um, we're gonna pick the steep, the steepest part here, just to show um, its maneuverabil maneuverability. So let's go ahead and we'll press the uh, pedal throttle mode. And so now we're back to WS. And so I can, Control this with WS, and like I was saying, you know, I was going to overcomplicate, you know, the land sea modes, but doing it this way, where your prop and your wheels are always turning, it allows you to very easily just, um, you know, just come right off of the water and right onto the land without having to change anything. So here we go. We're at the steepest part of the uh, of the island, and as you can see, no problem. There we go. Kind of a superstar uh, approach there. So, uh, you know, really nice, simple vehicle that, um, you know, I think will do well for the competition. Um, you know, you can sit back, have people sit in the back in the padded seats. Um, 
for me, I'm going to use this vehicle on my home ship as a an amphibious uh, land vehicle to go out to the land. So this rope anchor here is uh, directly in the center of gravity. So if you wanted to load this on something, you can use the center rope anchor and pick it up, and that will uh, stay nice and level for you. You also have a rope anchor on the front and on the back, so you can tie off to docks. But um, that is the mud skipper for the competition. Um, thank you for watching.